In modern football, it is common for a top-tier side to have players from across the world in their ranks. But a long time ago, a team having a player from outside the British Isles was a rare sighting. But in the early 1950s, Newcastle had not one, but two foreign players in their side, a pair of brothers from Chile. George and Ted Robledo both played for Newcastle from 1949 to 1953. In their time at St James's Park, they broke the mould for foreign players, making a huge impact on the English game and becoming firm favourites on Tyneside. This is a story of George and Ted, the Robledo brothers. Jorge and Eduard Robledo were born in Ijije, Chile. Jorge was born on the 14th of April 1926, and Eduard was born on the 26th of July 1928. The brothers fled to England in 1932 with their English mother Elsie and younger brother Walter due to the political instability in Chile at the time. Their Chilean father would be left behind. They would settle in Brampton, Yorkshire. Growing up in England, they adopted anglicised versions of their names, with Eduard being known as Ted and Jorge being known as George. George Robledo would divide his time between working in the coal mines and playing for Huddersfield as an amateur during the Second World War. The forward would sign professional terms with Barnsley in 1943 at the age of 16. George would instantly make an impression, scoring a hat-trick on the opening day of the first post-war season. In 1947, Ted would follow his brother to Barnsley, also signing professional terms. Ted would play as a left half, but did not quite make the same impression as his elder brother. By 1949, George had scored 45 goals in 105 games for Barnsley, and Newcastle came calling. The Magpies offered Barnsley around £26,000 for the striker. However, George refused to sign for Newcastle, unless Ted was allowed to join them too. Newcastle agreed, and the Robledo family would relocate to Tyneside. George Robledo quickly settled in, finding the perfect way to endear himself to the Geordies by netting the winner against Sunderland. George formed an impressive partnership with Jackie Milburn, and his performances in his first season earned him a call-up to the Chile squad for the 1950 World Cup in Brazil. Ted would not be on the plane, but George was still able to make an impression. Despite not speaking Spanish, he would impress, netting against the USA in a 5-2 win. Sadly, Chile did not progress beyond the group stage. Ted struggled more than George with the lack of a father figure, and the tough nature of settling into a new environment was proving difficult for him. George would net 14 times in the 50-51 season as Newcastle found their way to the FA Cup final. Newcastle would face Blackpool, and George became the first ever South American to play in an FA Cup final. Unfortunately, Ted would not be involved with the game. A double from Jackie Milburn won the FA Cup for Newcastle. The Cup win appeared to serve as a boost for both of the brothers. George would explode into form in the 51-52 season, netting 39 goals in all competitions. Ted also finally started to find a place in the squad, and made the majority of his total appearances for Newcastle in the same season. Newcastle would be back at Wembley for a second successive FA Cup final, and this time, both Robledo brothers were on the pitch. George and Ted started, making it the first FA Cup final with more than one foreign player involved. The game was deadlocked for a huge amount of time, but having scored so many times that campaign already, George Robledo could always be relied on. George Robledo would net the winner in the 84th minute to seal a second consecutive FA Cup for the Magpies. George and Ted had won the FA Cup together. The brothers would stay at Newcastle for one more season, in which George netted 18 times. His tally took him to 82 top flight goals, which made him the highest foreign scorer in the English First Division, a record he held for almost half a century. In 1953, Ted would return to Chile, signing for Colo Colo. This time, it would be George who followed his brother. They were seen as heroes in Chile for their exploits of Newcastle, and helped take Colo Colo to two league titles. They also both turned out for Chile in the 1955 South American Championships, taking the country to second place, losing out to Argentina. Ted attempted to return to English football in 1957, trying out for Notts County. He would not receive a contract, and retired from football shortly after. 
George would end his career in Chile with Deportivo O'Higgins before retiring in 1960. George would spend the rest of his days in Chile, but Ted's life was tragically cut short. After his retirement, Ted Rob Lader would work on oil rigs. In December 1970, he was reported missing from a ship called the Al San, sailing out of Dubai. The captain of the ship, Heinz Besenik, said that he believed Ted had committed suicide because of family troubles. There was talk of a fight between the captain and Ted, although those close to Ted said he was not the type to be involved in confrontations. The next year, Besenik was on trial for Ted's murder. Besenik had changed his story during the trial, and the ship's steward noted that Ted's bed had been slept in, but all his clothes had been left on the floor, and an ornamental dagger in the captain's office was missing. Besenik walked away from the trial a free man, with the court deciding the evidence against him was inconclusive. Exactly what happened to Ted Robledo in his final moments will forever remain a mystery. Ted Robledo's body has never been found. George Robledo was so heartbroken by his brother's death that he was unable to join Walter Robledo when he flew to the Persian Gulf in an attempt to find out the truth. George would outlive his younger brother by 19 years, dying in 1989 at the age of 62. George and Ted Robledo were pioneers for foreign footballers. At the time of their careers, a team having foreign players was almost unprecedented, but the two stuck together, and in doing so, found glory at the end of it. George Robledo set the league alight with his goal scoring, and although Ted would not achieve the same levels of glory, without him, George would not have gone to Newcastle at all, and both their careers may have slid into obscurity. Whilst the story of the Robledo brothers ended in mysterious tragedy, it should not overshadow what they achieved. Whilst many South Americans have achieved in England, they were the first ever ones to lift the FA Cup. And whilst they only spent five years at Newcastle, they became heroes not just at St. James's Park, but back home in Chile too. And they will forever be remembered as the brothers who broke boundaries and lifted the FA Cup together. <laughs>